Hi everyone and welcome to our first day of graphing the sine and cosine functions. Today we are going to be looking at the new parent functions y equals sine x and y equals cosine x and by the end of the hour you should have in your mind what y equals sine x looks like, much like you'd have y equals x squared or y equals x cubed or the square root of x or whatever, what they look like um, with a certain amount of accuracy. And as you can probably guess, the graphs of y equals sine x and cosine x come from the unit circle. So we're going to kind of combine those two ideas today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph f of x equals sine x. And the first question I ask you is what do the input values represent? Now remember input values, those are these x's. Right, so what kinds of things do you take sines and cosines of? And if you answered angles, well, you of course would be correct. And in particular, as we're looking at the graphs of the trig functions, we're going to be looking at angles in radians as we start to graph. So that's what the x values are going to represent. The output values represent what we call the ratios. When you do sine, you're really getting a ratio of opposite side to hypotenuse. That's a ratio, and those are the kinds of answers that you get. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this unit circle, which I have off to the side here, and we're going to label some of our angles. So for example, on the unit circle, we would call this 0, but we might also call it 2 pi. That would be one entire revolution around the unit circle. Likewise, we would call this pi. Up here would be half of that, so pi over 2, and down here would be 3 pi over 2, and of course we're very familiar with those. Those angles are the input values, and that's what's going to go on the x-axis. So over here we're going to put the angles. And so this is going to represent 2 pi. Halfway would be pi. This will be pi over 2, and this will be 3 pi over 2. Now the output values, those are going to represent the ratio, and we know that in two ways. We know that as opposite over hypotenuse, we also know it as a second point on the unit circle. So for those quadrantal angles that I've labeled, remember that on the unit circle, they are all cosine values followed by sine values. So I'm going to go ahead and write down this point is 1, 0, this is 0, 1. Those are the like easiest points to remember. Oops, don't know what happened there. Hold on. Well, I do know what happened. I hit a button. This is negative 1, 0. And this is 0, negative 1. And then, of course, we remember that the sine function, the one that we're working with right now, is the second number. So I'm going to use the second number representing the height of each point on the unit circle, and I'm going to transfer that to the graph paper. Now, if you look at those values, they, they vary between 0, 1, and negative 1. So on the x, excuse me, on the y-axis, where the ratios are going to go, the output values, they'll go from 1 to negative 1 and to 0. So if I plot those, here's what I know. At 0 radians, the sine function is 0. That's right here, so it goes to the origin. At pi over 2 radians, that's right here, the sine function is 1. That's a dot right here. At pi, it's going to be at 0. At 3 pi over 2, that's down at the bottom, it's going to be negative 1. I've circled those values. And then at 2 pi, it's back to 0. Now you might wonder, well, what does it do in between? So let's do a couple of in-between values. For example, if I look at this angle right here, this angle right here is the angle pi over 4. And that pi over 4 is midway between the 0 and the pi over 2. So at pi over 4, that's this point right here, midway between 0 and pi over 2, the coordinate is going to be however high this little line is right here. So if I just transfer that over, that's going to be right about here. Likewise, if I did halfway between pi over 2 and pi, that's right here, that's going to be that exact same height. So halfway between pi over 2 and pi, it's going to be that exact same height. And what happens is the graph begins to look like a curve. Now that curve continues, and without plotting all kinds of other points, it continues and it looks like this. And it actually is sometimes even referred to as a wave. It's a sine curve, or sometimes it's referred to as a sine wave. 
So this is the graph of a sine wave, and it's just part of the graph. And so what I'd like you to kind of have memorized is this is now one of our period, or excuse me, one of our uh, parent functions. Uh, below that it says the function f of x equals sine x is a periodic function. Explain why this is a periodic function and state the period. Well, to do that, I think it would be worth graphing again and more. So we've only graphed really a section of it. So if you think about angles that you can put into the sine function, those input values, you can definitely put angles that are more than 2 pi, but you can also put in negative angles. And what does that mean? So that's what we're going to do on the grid right below it. But I'm going to do it a little bit faster this time. So here's what I know. As I start to label these angles again, each of these tick marks here is going to be a pi over 2. So this is a pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and I can keep going beyond that. So what comes after that? Well, this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. This would be 5 pi over 2. I could even keep going and go 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi, and so on. And I can do that backwards as well. So backwards... This would be negative pi over 2, which remember that a negative pi over 2 angle is just a reversal in the other direction around the unit circle. Then we have a negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi, and so on. And I know that it's going to vary between 1 and negative 1. So let's go ahead and think about that graph again. Going back to my unit circle up here, as I look at this unit circle, what it's going to do is it's going to start at 0, and it'll go from 0 to 1, to 0, to negative 1, to 0. And then if you keep going around this like a Ferris wheel, it would go 0 to 1, to 0 to negative 1, to 0 to 1, to 0 to negative 1, and so on. It just keeps doing that over and over. So that's what I'm going to plot here. It's going to go 0 to 1, 0 to negative 1, 0 to 1, 0 to negative 1, and so on. Now, what if we go in reverse direction? If I go backwards, I'm going to start right here now, and I'm going to go in a negative angle. That means I'll go clockwise. It'll go from 0 to negative 1 to 0 to 1, 0 to negative 1, and so on. So as I graph that, it went from 0 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 0, and so on. And if I connect these, and by the way, when you connect them nice and curvy, not sharp and pointy, they are waves, not mountains. It goes like this, and it continues, dot, 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 forever and ever and ever, which leads us to a couple of things that we often talk about when we introduce a new kind of graph. One thing we talk about is the domain. This domain goes forever to the left and forever to the right, and it just keeps repeating itself. So the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Notice I didn't include either one of those. The range is how far down it goes to how far up it goes. It goes all the way down to negative 1, all the way up to 1, and it definitely hits both of those. So the range is from negative 1 to 1. And now the period. The period is sort of the new thing. This is a periodic function. Why is it a periodic function? The reason we call it a periodic function is because it repeats itself. over and over and over. And what we indicate here is when we talk about it's repeating is how long before it starts to repeat itself. So I'm going to color in one period or one cycle of this sign graph. So here it goes. It is this top piece and this bottom piece. That is considered one period. When you state the period of the graph, you state how long it takes until it starts to repeat itself. And in this case, it repeats itself every 2 pi unit. And guys, if you think a lot about the unit circle, doesn't that sort of make sense? That if you go 2 pi units around the unit circle, you just start to repeat your stuff. You go all the way around. That's 2 pi. Around again. That's another 2 pi. Around again. That's another 2 pi. And so on. All right, next question. Is the sine function an... It shouldn't say and. It should say an odd function, an even function, or neither, explain. So how can we tell if it's an odd or an even? Well, let's just look at one point in particular. If I look at, say, the point pi over 2, which has a y value of 1, does negative pi over 2 have the same y value? So go to negative pi over 2. Oh, it doesn't. It actually has a negative 1. And that's actually true for all of the functions. So if you've got a 
positive x positive y followed by negative x negative y, that's what an odd function is. And you can actually see the symmetry, the rotational symmetry of 180 degrees about the origin. This is, in fact, an odd function, which means, of course, that f of negative x is the same as negative f of x. And I'm not sure why that didn't write very well. That's what it looks like. f of negative x is the same as negative f of x. So f of negative pi over 2 is the same as negative um, f of pi over 2. All right, so graph on the calculator and check your results. So if you got a second, go ahead and graph on your calculator. A couple of things that you're going to want to do when you graph on your calculator, and I do want you to do this, although I don't have a calculator in front of me. Um, the first thing I want you to do is check your mode. You'll need to be in radians. Secondly, check your window. You want to check your window so it sort of matches this window, and a nice one is actually set up for you. If you select Zoom Trig, that will format a window that's similar to the one that we have. I believe that is option number seven, so I think if you hit Zoom seven, and then enter, and then go ahead and type that in, y equals sine x, and see if your graph looks the same as this one does. Go ahead and do that now, and when you're ready to proceed, um, go on to the next page. So the next page, okay, we're on to cosine now. So f of x equals cosine x. You're going to find out that this looks a lot like the y equals sine x, but of course it's not the same. So I'm going to go ahead and label those angles again, same angles that we had before. So the angles that we used before were 0 and 2 pi, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Turns out that those are going to be your high spots, your low spots, and your x-intercepts, so we don't really need anything beyond that, but we know, of course, there are lots of points beyond it, which is why we connect them. So when we're graphing this one, remember that this first one is the point 1, 0. Up top, 0, 1. Over here to the left, left 1, up nothing. Down at the bottom, 0, negative 1. And then I'm going to start to graph, but only this time, remember, as we graph these, cosine is the first number. So where the sine graph really represents how far up the point is, this really tells us how far over the point is. And it starts at 1. So it's going to go from 1 to 0 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 to 0 and so on. So in thinking about how high it's going to go, it'll go up as far as 1 and down as far as negative 1. My angles are 2 pi and pi again. This is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And then I graph, starting at 1. So at, the, at 0 radians, it is up 1. That's right here. At pi over 2 radians, that's up here, it's at 0. At pi, it's at negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, it's at 0. At 2 pi, it's back to 1. And like the sine function, the cosine function is also a periodic function. In the same way, you can just continue to go round and round, and it's going to repeat those values over and over. So roughly sketched, and here's what I want you to do, it is also periodic, and it's also periodic in the same way that sine is. When I ask you to graph a sine or a cosine function, I don't want you to spend a lot of time, because now this is now going to be considered a parent function. So with a parent function, here's what I want you to do. I want you to kind of remember where it's... Wow, what did I write that for? Hold on. Sometimes I just lose my mind. There it is. All right, so what I often will do is I will just set up my scale here. That this is going to be, whoops, not there. That's twice. You guys keep track. Make a tally mark for every mistake I make. This is 2 pi. This is pi. Pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. And then these guys over here negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi. And guys, in the future, I almost I almost always only indicate the negative 2 pi. Um, and then I go ahead and I start to get to graph. Now, what I think about is, and pretend I don't have the graph up top, is I know that it's a wave. This one happens to be a cosine wave. The sine and the cosine graph look a whole lot alike. The difference is kind of where they start and what direction they take. I don't need a lot of points to figure it out. All I need is the first one and the second one. And then I remember that it's a wave. So cosine starts at one. I'm gonna do this in a different color here. Oh, let's go with green. Starts at one, that's this one, goes to zero, 
that's this one. And then from there, it's a wave. So from one to zero to negative one to zero to one, and it keeps going backwards from one to zero to negative one to zero to one. I don't take a lot of time thinking about it. I just have to remember that it's a wave and I have to remember where it begins. And once I have that, then I have the graph. So domain, again, just like sine, negative infinity to infinity. Range, again, just like sine, negative one to one. They're not that different. The only difference is really where things happen and the period, how long before it re starts to repeat itself. Well, again, if I kind of color in one of those periods, it starts high and ends high like this. That's one period and then it repeats itself. That is two pi radians, just like it was before. So now we have these two parent functions. Let's talk about this one. Is the cosine function an odd function, an even function or neither? So what do you think? First of all, just in looking at the graph, does it appear that it's got rotational symmetry like the sine did over the origin, 180 degrees? It does not. Does it look like it might reflect over the y-axis? Oh, it definitely does, in which case it is an even function. So what does that mean? It means that if you do f of negative x, you will always get exactly the same thing as f of x. And I can show you that with one point, for example. This point right here, that's f of pi over 4. Okay, so at pi over 4, the cosine is the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, you all know that, right? Here's negative pi over 4. What's the cosine value there? So f of negative pi over 4, that is also the square root of 2 over 2. You get the same y value with opposite x values. That's how even functions behave. So the cosine is an even function. The sine is an odd function. So if you want to, go ahead and graph that on your calculator and see if you agree. I'm ready to move forward. So for our next bunch, we're going to start to do some things with shifting and stretching and all of that. So the first question here says, let f of x equal the sine of x, and then we're going to sketch it below from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. So you'll see now I've got a grid here. These major axes I put on the grid, those are your pi over 2s. I only labeled the, the major one, the 2 pi. So kind of the rest is sort of implied. Um, I'm going to graph a sign. All I have to remember is, of course, where does the sign begin? So if I think about my unit circle here, the coordinate 1 to the right, 0 up, 0 to the right, 1 up. That's all I really need. So where does sign begin? It starts at 0. That's right here. And then it goes from 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 and back to 0. Now, I am using a light green color. I want you to just lightly pencil this in because we're going to start to move that thing around. So I'm going to keep it going now. Here it is to get the rest of the graph. Sorry about that dot one. Don't know where that came from. Again, I do know where it came from. It came from my mistake. Why do I keep saying that? I don't know. I had a student in my stats tell me I was crazy because I talked to myself during these podcast, but I'm like, you know, I have no idea how to do this when you're by yourself. It's all kind of weird. All right, so here goes. All by myself here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph now f of x plus 2. Now, we of course know from our previous unit that when you put a plus 2 at the end, that indicates that every point is going to move up 2. Now, will I move every single point up 2? Well, I will, but I'm probably going to just start with what I'll call the major ones. So the major ones are the ones that are the quadrantal angles where those big dots are. So I'm going to take each of those and move them up 2. I'm going to start at the one at the origin. So I'm going to go up 2. I like to make a little X. From here, I'll go up 2, make a little X. From here, up 2. From here, up 2. So really what we're saying is once we have a, the parent function, and we understand what the graph of the parent function looks like, the rules that we developed earlier, gosh, they still apply. They're the same rules that we use today. So I got all these nice little points. All I have to do now is connect them. And there we go. There's our graph. Now we also are told to write an explicit equation. That is, the equation that's given is one that's written in terms of f of x. The explicit equation is going to be this y equals f of x, which is the sine of x, and then we went up to. Now the parentheses around the x are actually not needed, um, but I put them there and I try to remember to put them there so that it doesn't look like the 2 is connected to the x. In the order of operations, you do the sine first and then you add 2 and that's why we write it that way. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. 
This one, oh, it looks a little bit more involved because now it looks like we're going to have a couple of things to do. But we are going to start again with a sine of x. That's what it tells us to do. So I'm going to go back to my nice little green pen and I'm going to roughly sketch in a sine graph. So here goes. From here, I always put the dots down because that helps me to know which ones I'm shifting and it helps me to be more accurate with my graph. And accuracy is the thing, guys. Whenever you get a grid, accuracy is sort of implied. So getting those points here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now what am I going to do? This thing tells me I'm going to shift it to the right, pi over 2. That's one of what I call those major tick marks, those big tick marks. And then the up 2 is going to be up 2. I guess I should say the plus 2 at the end is going to be up 2. All right, here goes. I am not going to do all the points. I'm just going to start with the first five and kind of see where that goes. First five would be these five. One, two, three, four, five. The five that determine kind of the period. So I'm going to take each one of those and using my pencil, will you watch me first before you even try to do it with me? See this right here, this point? I'm going to go to the right pi over two. That's pi over two. And then I'm going to go up to one, two, and I'm going to get a point. Then I'm going to take this one. I'm going to go right pi over two. That's the, to that next major tick mark. And then up two, I'm going to get that point. Okay, here goes. Now, with my pen. From here, right pi over 2, up 2, put an X. This point, right pi over 2, up 2, put an X. This point, right pi over 2, up 2, put an X. This one, right pi over 2, up 2, put an X. This one, right pi over 2 is going to be sort of here, up 2, put an X. Now, those are the what I call those five points. I have enough there for me to kind of just keep that pattern going without having to think about all the other ones I want to switch. So I can see that I'm going from uh, like what I'll call the midline to the low to the midline to the high to the midline. The next one must be the low one then. And that's going to be like right here to the midline to the high to the midline to the low. It's just a little easier way to get those other points without having to think about all of those shifts. And then, again, connect in a nice, smooth curve. Now, hopefully you just watch me do that. You know what? I went down too far on that one, by the way. It was supposed to go just to here. Um, so you go ahead now and do that on your own. I'm fixing mine because it's how I do things. I'm attempting to fix it. All right, and then in the end, the explicit equation, y equals the sine of x minus pi over 2. Notice that's what we did, and then up 2. So I just replaced f of x with sine of x. All right, now, how about we do one with a cosine? What do you think? Good idea? I think it's a good idea. All right, this next one says cosine. Here it is. So with a cosine, I'm going to start with a sketch. Now, where does cosine begin? I'm going to go back up here. Remember this little thing I made up here? Cosine is the first number, starts at 1, and then it goes to 0, and then the wave begins. So I'm going to start at 1, then to 0, then to negative 1, then to 0, then to 1. That's that parent function, and in the other direction, same thing. And then you're going to lightly pencil yours in, just like I did. Lightly pencil it in, and then we're going to graph a new function related to that using the transformation rules from our previous unit. So what do those transformational rules say? Well, we have here a negative. That negative tells us it's going to be reflected over the y-axis. And this minus 2 means it's going to be down 2. All right, let's do it, starting with this first point right here. I'm going to put my pen, and again, I'm not going to write yet right away. I'm going to just think about it first. So this one right here, this dot, is going to reflect over the y-axis. So it's one up, it's going to go to one down, and then from there it's going to go down one, two, and this will be my new point. This one, one reflected, does not move, but then it goes down two. This one, one reflected, goes up to one, and then it goes down two, ends up back where we started. This one just goes down two. This one goes to here and then down two. All right, I'm just going to start with those five points and then see if I can take it from there. Here goes. All right, reflect, down two. Reflect, down two. Reflect, down two. Reflect, down two. 
reflect down to. You can kind of see now the pattern forming. It goes from low to middle to high to middle to low. The next one's going to be a middle to high to middle to low. And then we have the entire graph. Nicely drawn. All right, explicit equation, y equals negative f of x here is cosine. So cosine in parentheses x minus 2. And if I forget the parentheses, they're not actually needed. The x, of course, is needed. Okay, so that's kind of what we are looking at today, and you're going to be practicing in that, getting really good at it. The next one just has a little extra wrinkle in it. It's also a cosine, so let's start by doing a quick graph of cosine. Cosine, remember, starts at 1, and then goes to 0, to negative 1, to 0, to 1. All right, there it is. And then what I have to do is I have to go left pi. And what's that 3 going to do? That's kind of the new wrinkle. That is, of course, the stretch factor. So when a sine or cosine graph is stretched vertically, as this one is, or compressed vertically, then the stretch factor has a new name. When you're referring to sines and cosines, it is called the amplitude. So this one has an amplitude of 3. So what does that mean about the graph? Well, here's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm going to show you first, and then I'll do the graph. So I'm going to put my pen right here at the beginning. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shift it to the left pi. Now, this is pi over 2, right? So I'm going to go 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. That's this one. And then I'm going to stretch it by 3. So currently, it's at 1. When you stretch it by 3, 1 times 3 is 3. That's going to move me to right here. And I'll put a dot. This one, go left pi, 1, 2, that's pi. Stretch it by 3, it doesn't move. This one, left pi, stretch it by 3. Currently, it's at negative 1. It's going to go to negative 3. It'll be right here, and so on. So when I graph this now and kind of put this all together, here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to do it again now. This time, I'm going to actually put the point. So starting here at the highest point, go left pi, stretch by 3. That's right here. This one, go left pi, stretch by 3. The next one, go left pi, stretch by 3. This one, go left pi, stretch by 3. This one, go left pi, stretch by 3. Those are your five points. You can kind of keep them going, I'll bet you. So you're going from a high to, whoops, don't know what I did there. Try that again. From a high to a zero, to a low to a zero, or a middle, to a high to a middle, to a low. Keep the pattern going because it's periodic. So if, again, if I start right here at this one, that's high, zero, low, zero, high, zero, low, and connect the dots. And you can see, sorry that my pen isn't perfect, that the graph does get taller. It gets stretched out vertically. You can see that very well here. All right, so equation for that one, y equals 3 cosine x plus pi and done. So at this point, guys, now we know, and I think the rest of that's for the last two pages of your homework. So at this point, hopefully you know what the sine looks like and what the cosine looks like. Those are now parent functions. So they go in that list of all those other equations. We already know what they look like. And in addition to that, we are starting the process of moving things around and stretching and so on. And that's an idea that will continue over the course of the next few lessons. So go ahead and give your homework a shot. Remember, graphing for accuracy. Make sure you're not just throwing crappy little sine waves on there. I want to make sure they hit all the right points in the right places. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you next time. All right? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. That wasn't supposed to be.